must a man walk down before you can call him a man? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Hey, everyone. John Michael Swift here and welcome back to my four stroke thumb picking series. I'm doing a whole bunch of songs and a whole bunch of technique lessons on what I call four stroke Travis picking, which is basically this. Obviously, it's a little more associated with country thumb picking than with kind of like the more kind of urbane Simon and Garfunkel type of stuff, which is all gravy. Um, uh, the one I wanted to do today was Blowing in the Wind. It's a really, really good one for playing these types of patterns. Really good way to learn them for at first. Um, and the other one fun thing about this song is there's a bunch of really neat bass walks in it. So I'm going to do a version that's really close. Not exactly, but very, very close to what was done on the original record. So if that's what you're looking for, this is a great place. If you do happen to like this lesson and you want me to do kind of more in-depth stuff on these techniques, really consider becoming a patron of mine because that's really how I support the more advanced lessons being created. So I support these lessons being created in any case. So um, give that some thought. But in any case, you can also use the lesson navigator down below in the description box. You can kind of jump around this lesson to find the parts that you actually need or come back to parts you want to repeat again. Um, it'll also help you find the tabs that'll go with this lesson. Anything that'll be kind of helpful to you should all be there. Okay, yeah, with that, let's get into it. I'm going to start out by doing the chords. Then I'm going to do some of the right hand patterns that we're going to do. Although, if you haven't checked out my lesson on four stroke thumb picking, you definitely want to do that because I'm not going to go over a lot of these patterns in detail in this lesson. There's another place that's been done. And in this one, I'm just going to focus on what's unique about this song. Um, and then I'm going to kind of play a verse and a chorus to kind of glue it all together. Because this song is basically just verses and choruses and verses and choruses in the same pattern again and again and again and again and again. It's, it's all about the words. The kids, they like the words these days. It's kind of what it's all about. So, yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Enough talk, one more action. Okay. Song starts out on a C, pedals a C for the chorus, All right, the chorus, the intro, pedals a C for the intro, perdon, uh, it's going to go C for two beats, F for two beats, C for four beats, on C for two beats, F for two beats, G for four beats, and it just repeats that pattern, C. That's your verse right there. The chorus is going to go F to G to C walks down to A minor, F up to G back to C, two, three, four. Those are the chords and the counts. And real quick, let me show you that walk down. The walk down is you're going to have the ring finger on the third fret of your E string. So I've got to tell you, there's a capo on four for this. That really helps a lot. Anyway, capo on four, you get your ring finger on the third fret. I tend to kind of just slide this finger down here, but you can also pick up the ring finger and play two on the A string, either one. But the key you want to have is three, two, zero, excuse me, three, two, zero on the A string. And with the pattern, sounds really nice that way. So that's a really important little bit in there. But why don't we try to just brush through. If you thought you understood all the chords that I explained before, I'm going to brush through the whole song and just sing the words. And if you can remember all the chords without me telling you and keep them in the right counts, you've got it. If not, repeat this section a few times until it kind of sticks. So here we go. So kind of brushing. Kind of brushing for the intro. Here we go. How many roads must a man walk down? Before you can call him a man How many seas must a white dove sail Before she sleeps in sand How many times must the cannonballs fly Before 
again, go over that just brushing the chords until you get the counts down. Because when we start to put in the thumb patterns, things are going to get a little hairier, a little harder to understand. So make sure you're pretty clear on where the chords are, how long each one is held, and then let's go on to this. So again, make sure you've done my lesson on four-stroke Travis patterns. Um, but basically to do a real quick refresher, there are two main patterns, you, well, there's two kind of pedaling patterns you can use in a song. There's a four-stroke pattern that starts on the A string, and your C chord is going to use that, your A minor chord is going to use that, um, and the thumb is going to go five, four, six, four, like that. And your pointer finger and your middle finger are going to go back and forth and back and forth, always in between the thumb. So the pointer finger is going to start first, and it's going to go thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Keep track of the thumb pattern. There's one pattern. you kind of got that down and then again when notes or chords start on the sixth string your top string here then you're going to go six four five four with your g chord and your f chord we'll start with that and those are the only two patterns you're really going to need to worry about you can interrupt a couple of them for some really nice bass walks but the first thing you want to do is make sure you can kind of count those patterns. So why don't we try to go through the song again. And instead of doing like the number of counts that each chord is on, I'm going to do the number of bass patterns that it has. And so basically for every two counts a chord had, that's one bass pattern. Because the bass pattern, it takes two beats to do. It takes one and two and then there's a pattern. There's another one. So it's two beats for every bass pattern. So let's see if we can figure this out on that basis. Start from the, uh, the verse. Start at the beginning of the verse. A little bit slow. C is first. Ready? Here we go. Pattern on C. Pattern on F. Got to switch the pattern back to C. One pattern on C. Two patterns on C. Third pattern on C. Switch to F. G. that or slow it down or break down certain parts a few times that's okay especially if you're on a desktop computer or something that can slow down a video use the little controly settings device on YouTube to kind of slow the video down so you can stay up with it and really nail the patterns down um, cool so go over that until you feel it's established when you feel you got it I'll show you a couple of the neat little bass walks he does so he's kind of plugging away over the intro right Good. He just kind of goes three on the E string, open A, second on the A, and he lands. So it's kind of like right after the start of a pattern. The pattern starts, bass, 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 the new pattern starts. So see if you can get that one down first. That's kind of like you're going back to C walk. You're crazy awesome if you can keep these fingers going, but if you drop the fingers and you just go, that's fine too. Absolutely fine as well. I'll often take a second to restart my finger pattern after that too, and that's okay too. It's not a huge deal, but that's a first walk. Um, let me start going from the song. I'm trying to remember where these are. How many roads must a man walk down? Still pedaling. Boy, you can call him a man. It's kind of holding through this. 
How many seas must white the sail before she sleeps in the sand? So this G. Bum, 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 bum. So there's a really great place to do that. So you're doing the G chord, you're like pattern on the G. And then right after the start of the pattern, again, you've that's where the walk fits. So it's like six, four, five, four, six, six, five, five. In terms of string number, that's what your thumb is gonna do to get that bass walk. Yeah. So that's the kind of going back to the C. Now it's kind of funny. On the record, he actually does that walk and kind of fakes you out when he goes to the chorus. It's like um, before they're forever banned. He does that walk, but then he goes to the F. It's a little weird, but that's what happens there. So bear that in mind. It's a little twist to throw at you. Um, when it goes, he is blowing in the wind. So this is a part that I always got a little tripped up when I first did this. So the C chord goes, he is blowing in the wind. It's almost like you start a two-stroke pattern. So you go fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, fifth string. So you kind of like repeat the fifth string again and again to make that bass walk. The answer, my friend, pattern is one, two, walk the bass. And if you can, you want to try to jump right into a four-stroke pattern on the A minor chord. If you have to just go... If you have to kind of like do two stroke over the A minor chord, that's fine too. A lot of times if I'm just like not thinking about it, I'll just go walk, walk. I'll just kind of get into on the A minor chord, not the end of the world, but if you're, if you're really flashy, you go walk the bass by six, five. That's always a good little thumb thing to throw in there if you can catch it. Um, yeah, that being said, I think that is all the fancy bass walks in this song. What I'm going to do now is play a verse and a chorus a little bit slowly with all the fancy little tricks in there. And if you need to study any parts of it or play along, you're free to do so. That's what this section is for. So here we go. One, two, three. a few little inconsistencies I threw into that one. Feel free to explain them to other people in the comments if you caught them, but I think to me, when I pulled this arrangement apart, the main thing I was looking for was to get something a lot closer to the record, which I think we accomplished with this lesson, but also something that gives you some good use of the four-stroke pattern, which I think this also does. So if you're digging this stuff, check out the other lessons in this part of the series. Um, so you can kind of get more into the four-stroke pattern thing. There's a lot of other great songs that use this stuff, like all the Merle Travis songs does this stuff. Um, pretty much every John Prine song ever uses these patterns. So uh, Country Roads is another one we do. I think I might eventually do The Boxer by Paul Simon. That's another great one. Oh, man. Oh, man, I love that one. That's a great four-stroke Travis song. A little more complicated than the other ones. But anyway, I'm yakking on right now. Hope to see you all in another video. And yeah, hope you dig it. Peace. Love the guitar. Catch you later.